Okay, so we will have uh, now uh, of, uh, CEO of Renault, Carlos Tavares, and then another mobile demo uh, from Russia, uh, Cut the Rope, which is for me the new, uh, it's, the new it's, it's one of those huge successes like Angry Birds, and they're going to do a demo here, and they came from Moscow just for that, uh, for us today. But for now, let me, um, help me welcome, please, the CEO of Renault, Carlos Tavares. Welcome, Carlos. Thank you for joining us. Oh, here if you like, like here? here? Just oh, here. here. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here without my tie. That's, that's nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been courageous for Renault to, uh, to, to, to partner with the web and be here. And we have been, uh, I've been trying a Tweezy yesterday. I really like it. It's, uh, it's, it's surprising. Anyone has tried a Tweezy here in the room? Look, <laughs> they've all tried the, the car. And uh, it felt like a, like a motorbike to me. Really, really uh, powerful, very but nice. But it's much safer, I can tell you. Yes, of than course. Than a motorbike. Because I have a, a roof. A roof. Thank right. you. <laughs> well, you know, it's, um, it's a very exciting moment for us. Uh, as you know, we are bringing four uh, different electric vehicles. Uh, two are already on sale, uh, the, the Renault Kangoo and the Renault Fluence. Uh, the Tweezy will be on sale by early next year, and by fall next year, we'll have the, uh, the Zoe, a very uh, exciting and fresh uh, hatchback. So we are indeed uh, very excited about it. We are, at this stage, the only ones to bring such a wide range of electric vehicles. So now zero emission is a reality, and we were blessed with a very uh, nice um, news a few weeks ago because we were able, the team was able to succeed in a bid for a little bit more than 15,000 electric uh, kangoos, so uh, it's starting well. And Carlos, so you, you've started, we started actually with Carlos Gohn last year, who came here, and, uh, and, and, and came to the web to announce how electric was important for you. So one year after, you've got the Tweezy here. It was, it, was, it was a prototype we had last year, and we can drive it. Um, tell me about how you know, this is strategic for Renault, and where where do you think it's going? Well, it's highly strategic. You know, one of, one of the things that uh, made me smile when I came back from uh, the US last year uh, is the fact that people here are always talking about a bet. Well, this is not a bet. This is an insurance for the company. It's, in fact, the opportunity for us to take the leadership in zero emission mobility. And we have made huge investments and dedicated a lot of resources to make this happen. Again, we are the only ones to have four different EVs which don't cannibalize each other with very different segments. Uh, therefore, uh, it's true that now it's a reality, but we have been working, investing on this for the last three to four years. So it's, it's a, a very intense effort, a uh, very strong allocation of resources. Uh, we know that zero emission mobility is going to be something that will be part of our lives. Our kids and our grandkids will not select a car from any other shortlist than the shortlist of zero emission cars anyway. And sustainable mobility is, uh, is what we are trying to create. Tell me about connected cars, because we, we see that, uh, well, first you, you made some announcement, right? I yeah. Think. And there is, um, so how, how is that coming together? Well, you know, we, indeed, we, we made the announcement to have an uh, integrated uh, tablet in our cars, um, uh, a platform which we call our link. Uh, we are going to introduce this from, uh, from next year uh, using the launch of uh, the Renault Zoe. Yeah, we uh, showed that uh, tablet last year with Carlos that you know, someone had, had, you know, had removed basically a part of, uh, of, of, uh, of the car um, you know, instruments and, and put an, an iPad instead. So basically you are actually... It, we are doing it. Well, generally speaking, well, you need to get used to the fact that when Renault says something, generally we try to do it, generally speaking. So indeed, that's what we announced uh, last year, and now it's a reality. This uh, integrated tablet will be uh, launched with uh, the Zoe uh, in fall, uh, and also with our Clio Ford, the next generation of uh, the best-selling uh, Clio car. And those two cars are going to drive uh, the charge, if I may say, with this uh, integrated uh, connectivity. As we know so far, everything has been done in the cars to adapt to external devices like MP3 or whatever it is. It's the first time that we have a fully integrated device that can, of course, connect with the outside world, but also, and perhaps this is the most important, use fully all the information that are already available in the car. 
Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty impressive. Can you tell me how it will look like? That, uh, the, the, the tablet itself. Well, is, that, is it something that it's, it looks like an iPad? Is it exactly. It looks like an iPad on your instrument, instrument panel, on the center of the instrument panel. So it's very easy to, uh, to manipulate. It's uh, visible from both the driver and uh, the passenger. Uh, so it's something that a uh, lot of different people in the car can use. Uh, it will add to this continuum of uh, connection or connectivity between home and the uh, office and, uh, and, uh, and motion in the car. So this is going to be something that is all new, but is going to establish this ability to stay connected at any point in time. Tell me about apps, because we have a room here full of entrepreneurs and developers who want to uh, create and hack the car, right? They want to do uh, what, what you, you know, generally what car manufacturers don't really let them do for security reasons, which, uh, which we understand you don't want to, you know, to, to to be a threat for security. So how, how do you deal with this? Will well, what we want to do is to offer from the launch of this uh, R-Link uh, platform next year at least 50 apps uh, in the system. Uh, and of course, we are counting on all of you uh, to uh, come up with ideas. And we are very eager and open to establish partnerships to uh, uh, leverage the ideas that you have. We are looking for the solutions. You have the ideas, and you are looking for business. We have these two fantastic cars which are going to be launched, and we would like to uh, invite you uh, to propose your ideas and establish a partnership with Renault so that we will have those 50 apps. Some of them will be, of course, adaptations. Of is, that, is that a contest? I, I can challenge all of these uh, people here for that, yeah, of okay. course. Wow. But we, we are committing on the fact there will be at least 50. Okay. Of course, then we'll select the best 50, but if there are more, perhaps we can, we can include more. The key point is that some of those apps will be uh, adaptations of what already exists, but there is much more things to be created based on the information you can use from the car itself, and then uh, find out what are the kind of services that we can offer the customer based on those additional informations. And that's where um, Renault is very eager to collaborate, and, uh, and we have, I think, some tradition of being an open-minded company to establish partnerships. We had, during this... Um, uh, Web 11 uh, uh, conference, a uh, significant number of contacts. Uh, I think we are above 50 very serious contacts already, uh, but we would like to continue to, to leverage this opportunity. Give me some examples of apps you'd like to see or you think will come. Well, I think there, there is a lot of things to be done uh, related to uh, managing the autonomy uh, of the EV cars, a lot of things to be done in terms of car sharing, in terms of uh, making <laughs> sure that uh, we can uh, have the best use of the available mobility devices, the way we are going to organize ourselves within our community to use mobility. I think there are a lot of things uh, that we can find about understanding where are the uh, available parking lots, connecting with other people, for instance, on when can you use this parking uh, space here or over there. I mean, there is no so limit. So collaborative. There is no limit. You saw there is, a, in San Francisco, there is a, uh, um, a service, a startup that lets you put your car for rental, your own car. So you drive to the office, you park your car, and, and you switch on this app, you say it's now available it? for rental. I think there is no limit. The, the, the sky is our limit. And again, uh, one of the things we are trying to do by, uh, by Renault is to step out of the uh, dinosaur park, and uh, we are uh, counting <laughs> so, on so you. Wait, step out, that means you're still in it. Perhaps one of the feet is still there. I think you're not in it. You're, you're here. You're at the web. So. Uh, OK, so far we are, we are talking about it. But uh, you know, it's like for the EV. Four years ago, all of our competitors were saying, you know, uh, EV is for golf carts. And the uh, EV uh, technology is not mature. Uh, three or four years later, we have these four cars. I'm not even counting the cars from our alliance partner, Nissan. But we have these four cars. Uh, it's, it's an absolute reality. And all the guys who mentioned those things, I, I said, since then, they announced their own EVs. So I would like to go step by step. Today, we are announcing that we have this R-Link uh, capability integrated platform that will be launched next year. And we would like it to be uh, as rich as possible based on the imagination and the added value of all of these uh, creative people. So so that, that's a good, yeah, that's a very good continuation. We, we see the car, now we can build apps for the car, and maybe next year at the web we can show those apps. How do you support that? Because we need fuel, not electric fuel, but uh, there is obviously startups run on 
on, um, on, 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 on financing. Is there any way you can support that uh, ecosystem that you'd like to, uh, to be built? How do you support connected vehicles? Well, that's exactly the purpose of all the discussions we are having here at the Web11, is to make sure that we create this win-win uh, situation where the startups come with their ideas and their needs, uh, and we come with our power and uh, the support we can offer, not only uh, technical, financial, whatever kind of support uh, we, can, we can agree on. And again, we want to be very flexible. We want to be open-minded uh, because I think we have demonstrated through all the partnerships that we have established, and we have a few, uh, including big ones like the one we have with Nissan or we, with Daimler, I think there is in the DNA, the culture of the company now, an ability to work with very, very different kinds of people. And I think uh, we are now in a position where, with some confidence and with no arrogance, we can say that you should not be afraid of proposing bold things to Renault. We'll, we'll look at them and try to be as, as open-minded as possible in order to take this um, uh, vision, this dream of a, a fully connected uh, society to the next step. And do, are you happy about the contacts you got here? Uh, the developers are pretty interested, it seems. So far, it's absolutely great. The number, I, I was told this morning that the number of business cards has been decreasing very, very fast. Uh, but you mean because they don't use business cards? I don't know, because most probably we are distributing them. Oh, your business cards, I see. <laughs> Our business cards. But uh, beyond that, I, I know that we have already close to 50 very serious contacts, which is great. And uh, now we need to go to the next step and discuss in a more uh, uh, deep way about the content of what those uh, partnerships could be. Will you invest in startups? Will there be a, a Renault incubator or a fund or that would be that? That would be something. We, we don't exclude it, but uh, we don't consider that as a must. Strategically, we don't need it. We are not trying to take control of anything. That's not the point. Right. That's point. good. Startups don't like to be taken control. That's not, exactly. This Great. is not at all our intention. It is not strategic at all for us because we have a lot of examples. Let's just mention one. Uh, Renault was the first one to introduce low-priced navigation system with a, a very nice partnership with TomTom, Tom, where we, we had uh, more than one million cars on the road with uh, uh, low-priced uh, navigation systems, and uh, it has been extremely successful. And we don't need to control our partners to do great work with them and find win-win situations. So, it depends on what the partner is going to propose, but we don't need that control. We'll just try to find a way where they, they bring what they can bring, we bring what we can bring, and we see what we can uh, build together. But uh, So I think you're, you're partnering with incubators? Uh, at least uh, one incubator uh, that That's we announced. That's a great start. It's, it's a great start. It's a way to start. Uh, it's not exclusive to any other kind of uh, partnership, but this week we signed a, a partnership uh, called Paris Incubator. The purpose of this is to give support to startups that uh, would like to implement their projects, and it's going to start from March uh, 2012. It will last for one year, and during one year, we will fully support through this partnership with the Paris Incubator the six best projects that will be selected. So this is one way to give support, but again, I don't think it is exclusive at all. And uh, tell me, you think it's going to remain French? Or is it you have 60 countries here at the web? Well, uh, I'm very comfortable telling you, because uh, it's a Portuguese guy telling you this, that uh, there's nothing wrong about doing it in France. But in addition to that, we uh, can do it in other places in the world. This is an opportunity, which on top of it is very um, connected with the, the Web 11 being here organized in, in France. But it's not at all exclusive. If there are other opportunities outside of France, of course we will do it. I just want to remind you that we are selling 75% of our cars outside of France, and, uh, and now 42% of our cars outside of Western Europe. So our company is growing across the world. We are growing fast in Brazil. We are growing in Russia. We are uh, growing uh, now in, uh, in India. We are now growing uh, also in China. So growing a lot of places in the world, very open. We even had uh, proposals from a Turkish uh, startup recently. Oh, yeah. Very so good. I hear we are completely open. It's, it's very strong verbal growth. Uh, we, will all the cars be connected? We will start with the uh, Renault Chloe. Um, uh, Renault, how does it uh, work? Clio, sorry, not Chloe. That's my daughter. Is that like the king? <laughs> sorry. Uh, that's, no. She will like it. She will yeah, like I it. Think, I think she will. Yeah. Um, 
do you how, how does it work? It's like a Kindle where you, you buy the car and it comes with an orange chip or you know, in so it and you have to pay a subscription and, or it comes in the price of the car? Well, first, the car is going to be um, sold with the hardware. No, the car will have the integrated tablet on the IP, on the instrument panel. You, sh you need to have it. Wow. And well, then when do I get that? You get it in the, in the Clio 4 and in the uh, Zoe Which by next year, full next year. So the cars will be fully equipped. You buy the car, and the car has an integrated tablet. Wow. So then it's going to be uh, the customer decision uh, to um, take the, the fee uh, to get the connected services that go with the hardware. But the hardware will be included in the sale of the car. And the chip will be there, and everything will be already there. You just have to decide that you get the, uh, the fee uh, to have access to the service. But that's not an option to get the tablet. It's in it. No, it's integrated wow. in the car. Well, that's very cool. How, uh, how about the, the theme of the conference being social, local, mobile? So we talked about local cars are pretty local. We, right. we talked about mobile. How about social for, for Renault? Well, what, social, what, is that social, important for you guys? It is absolutely paramount. A very, a very simple reason. You know that uh, Renault has a long history now, more than one century history. And uh, if there is something we can say about Renault is that it is a humanistic company very much linked to the evolution of the French society, but not only, with a lot of social events through our history. So we feel very much connected to, uh, to everything that is around, around social. We, we believe also that it is in our mission to make uh, people's life easier uh, when they use their mobility device. And the DNA of the company, so I'm going to say it in French, is voiture à vivre. Voiture à vivre means that the core uh, of uh, our product positioning and of our brand is we want to make people's lives easier when they use uh, their mobility devices. And one way of doing that is to bring them services and technology to a level of affordability that uh, highest number uh, of people can, can afford. And this is exactly the spirit of the TomTom -tom low price navigation system where we, we went up to one million per year very, very quickly. Here it's going to be the same thing. We want to offer the connected uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, so will I get tweets and Facebook updates in my car, and I, I, I can drive, and I, I actually do that sometimes. I'm pretty. You can, you can see it on the screen. But and can I? So <laughs> in my car, I, I have to show you. It's pretty ridiculous. Sometimes I, I just record a video as well. Can you do that for me as well? Where, well, where there, I, there is going to be a speech recognition at one point in time where you are going to be able to dictate your own messages. And it tweets and it tweets directly, so that will come also. And it's, it's again, when you're talking about social, um, Renault is a company where we want to bring innovation for all. And it's all about making sure that the, the technology that makes uh, our customers' life easier is going to be brought to them at an affordable level. Uh, that's the spirit and that's the core positioning of our brand, Les Voitures à Vivre. I can't wait because if you think about all the location, for example, uh, Facebook places where you, you, know, you, you drive around and it could, the car could tell you, hey, uh, there is a great restaurant here, or hey, there is a four square place here that your friends like very much. That's why we are uh, opening this wide open door for uh, new apps to be proposed. You know, because again, I was saying uh, with some humor, hopefully, that we want to step out of the d dinosaur park, but we also recognize our limits. Our limits are very simple, we don't have today enough imagination or enough knowledge or enough expertise to take the best out of this uh, uh, technical capability that we are going to put in the car. So we will bring it the tablet, integrated tablet, but we, we expect you to bring the ideas and the, the, the applications that we will put in our app store. And I think you can expect that uh, from the entrepreneurs here. Tell me, social is very important. We have a full track today about the social enterprise and how social networks are used internally. Is there anything you're doing for, you know, for your employees? It is more internal within Renault to, to, to collaborate. There was a um, uh, Thierry Breton announcing last week that he wanted his entire company not to use email at all. Uh, I, I'm not sure how much of a press release it is in reality, but is, is Renault trying to integrate social inside? Yes, that's exactly what we are doing. It's going to be uh, on, um, on live by mid next year in 2012. You need to know that uh, we are now implementing in our company uh, a midterm plan, a six year midterm plan that we call Drive the Change. And as I usually say, in Drive the Change, you have change and you have drive, which means we want to re-engineer the way we do business. And of course, um, it is uh, paramount that we connect our people so that the best ideas can be discussed, leveraged, also the best practices 
can be discussed and leveraged. That's the reason why we are going to introduce it uh, by mid next year in the company. We are now in the trial stage. So a social network. A social it? network for the employees of the company. Uh, and this is going to be a reality. Because you have a small startup, it's only, what, 120,000 employees? It's 126,000 employees <laughs> for the time being. And uh, indeed, we are, we are still a small startup compared to some other big guys, but uh, growing, growing fast. And, uh, so uh, how is that I difficult or easy to manage for you to get all that incoming? So you will have, you will have an internal like Facebook-like tool? Exactly. So far, uh, I, I must tell you with some uh, sincerity and humility that I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, but I'm sure that people will find out. I'm sure that once they have the communication tool, I think a lot They're of experimenting things, now. They are experimenting. A lot of things will be done. And you know, not only to change ideas, but also to solve problems. Uh, we, we are a worldwide company now, and we know that some of the problems we are facing in some areas in the world can be solved with ideas that were found in other areas of the world. When I go to the Gemba and visit operations in Korea and then in Brazil or in France, I always see things that have been solved properly in one country, but another country ignores, sometimes in the same function, which means that this, uh, this um, social media at the corporate level is also a tool for people to solve problems collectively at a faster pace and then drive their own change bottom up instead of having some wise guys at the top making decisions and say, okay, guys, this is what we should do, please do it. Now, I think it has to be much more interactive, bottom up and top down, and this tool hopefully will help us to grasp all of this uh, capability. I'm very impressed how a pioneer you are uh, by integrating, of course, international co internal communication, but also in the product itself. Your product is a, is a long, you know, if you want to change something, it's not like we do, where we just change a, a line of code and it does something else. You're building cars, so it's very, very impressive. I understand that we are not in the same lead time. Huh? That's, that's clear. We are in a five-year lead time. You are perhaps in a, in a five-weeks lead time or five-months lead time. I don't know. But that's five weeks. Looks five like, weeks? Yeah. Le okay. Let's say five weeks. So that's why it is so important to have this integration of the, the platform in the car, because then the, the refreshment, the updates, the speed at which all of this is going to evolve has nothing to do with the things that we usually do. Even a, a, an in-depth navigation system uh, needs three years to be developed uh, in, a, in a car company reasonably uh, effective. So this is going to be, from my perspective, an open door for an acceleration of the services and the performance that we are going to offer our customers. Carlos, thank you so much for making the web happen. You are our official partner this year. And uh, we are really looking forward to this long-term partnership together. Absolutely. And uh, I'm looking forward to have uh, uh, a few dozens of uh, cars next year in front of the Web 12 with all the integrated tablets so that all of you, you can test not only the car, but also all the apps that you would create. That you uh, will have then. created. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll make sure to, uh, to connect with you even more of the startups uh, of those 60 countries here. Great. Thank you so much, Carlos, Thank you. My pleasure. for taking Thank you. some time for us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Carlos. All right. So, team, please listen to me. I'm going to try something very interesting here. I'm going to change the schedule live without my team knowing about it. Uh, so I'm actually going to say a few words in, uh, in, in French too. Sabine, je vais changer le programme et on va faire la session de Michel Yalin à 14h en ouverture. So Michel Yalin is not going to be now, but he's going to be in the opening at 2 p.m. because I know you guys in the room are, uh, are starving and I want uh, you back uh, full speed at 2 p.m. So I'm changing the program right now and I hope uh, my team can, uh, can help it. Now, Misha, I will talk to you in a bit and I uh, hope you can stay with us another uh, 45 minutes. We're ready to go right now. So I hope you realize how flexible our team is. So so have a great lunch and see you here at 2 p.m. And my team, I'm sorry, I won't do this to you again. <laughs>